Hi, uh, welcome to this, uh, this episode uh, on, uh, on Palestine. We are interviewing a Dutch anthropologist uh, on the West Bank in Palestine on the situation on COVID-19 uh, there. Uh, thank you, Twan van Tevelen. Thank you, Twan, for, uh, for attending. Could you introduce uh, a little bit to, to our audience uh, who you are and what kind of work you do in, uh, in Bethlehem? Sure. So, uh, <clears throat> Uh, I, I live in uh, Bethlehem since the end of the 90s, uh, so quite, uh, quite some time. And um, I came here in the mid-90s um, in order to teach at Beersheit University. Then I got to know my wife. I decided to, uh, we decided to stay here. Uh, we got children. We lived through the, uh, the Second Intifada from 2000 to 2004. And um, I, my background, as you said, is in anthropology. I moved to um, education and um, I'm now like working with an uh, educational institute, Arab Educational Institute, uh, to um, develop informal education, informal community education. Uh, over the years, we work with uh, groups inside uh, the AEI, and we also work uh, with uh, some dozens of schools, partly governmental schools, partly private schools, also with women uh, groups in the South and West Bank, maybe. Um, so uh, my, my, my interest is in, in um, discourse analysis. Mm -hmm. So I'm very much looking at the way how discourse in text and talk and uh, images, how that develops, that is a kind of uh, interest on, on uh, beside my um, my work. Um, so my 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 wife works here at Bethlehem University. is librarian. We have uh, two kids. Uh, one is uh, now doing online learning from from the home, mm -hmm. and uh, I I'm in fact doing my own work right now uh, through the through the internet. Uh, a lot of the work is second line. What I'm doing is developing. Uh, new projects, reporting, uh, proposal writing, and so on, uh, taking care of the fundraising, but also, um, you know, de developing new types of projects. So that gives me a kind uh, of opportunities to to develop projects in, in a way which is, you know, consistent with each other. And uh, mm -hmm. of course, now with the COVID-19 crisis, it is in a, a very uh, uncertain time in all respects. And um, at the same time, the, I, I, we have some stability here because I'm I'm here working out of the home. My wife is here. We uh, have the great privilege of having a garden here, so uh, it it is kind of quiet in a very turbulent uh, environment. I, I can imagine the 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 kind of trainings that you give, the kind of teaching you say, or informal uh, uh, teaching uh, you do uh, with schools, but also outside of schools. Then uh, these are in uh, you say your own interest is discourse analysis, but this work is in what kind of, is it leadership courses or what are the kind of activities and courses that you give with the uh, Arab Education Institute? Yeah, that's right. It is uh, leadership, but of course leadership in a very broad uh, understanding. To give an example, uh, we are working uh, in one project with eight uh, common schools around uh, Bethlehem, not in the center, but in the periphery, uh, close to refugee camps, checkpoints, um, have lots of difficulties there uh, in, in functioning. So what we do is we work with students from 14 to 17 years old to develop their own advocacy initiatives out of the school to, for instance, uh, issues like traffic um, uh, problems because of the fact that uh, settlers uh, pass by the schools. What can they do to create more safety inside and around uh, the schools? What can they do to prevent dropouts? Uh, we work with one school in the village of Batir to the west of Mm -hmm. Bethlehem close to the Green Line with Israel, kind of uh, traditional uh, border, uh, but there's not really a border, they, they, but they are close to the areas where, for instance, Palestinian laborers go into uh, Israel and come, come back. Mm -hmm. uh, at the same time, a very beautiful village. Uh, there is no wall in, in, in that area, uh, but, but they have also lots of uh, problems uh, regarding uh, the, um, the, the, the security apparatus of Israel, which uh, tries to um, go into the uh, school there uh, by having uh, all kinds of um, uh, security police, but also uh, cameras in and around uh, the school, so that because the school is directly uh, near the green line, in fact, near an um, uh, old uh, railway station, an old uh, railway, um, which once in an hour there's an uh, 
uh, a train passing by, but it affects whole uh, school life. So what can students do to bring out uh, their situation and, and to create like a forest to an international audience? That is one example, but, but also uh, when there's, um, uh, we are working in, uh, in H2 in Hebron, in the center of Hebron, which, uh, where you have a series of uh, uh, small settlements and we work there with uh, with women up till 35 years who have a lots of difficulties to uh, access uh, clinics uh, mm -hmm. to um, uh, to 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 deal with the palestinian authorities yeah. sometimes uh, examples of corruption there so what they try to do is collectively there's groups of uh, 30 young women in different neighborhoods there to 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 try to uh, deal with issues of, of corruption or favoritism that one street has you know is more favored than another street yeah. but can, also I, can i ask you to one uh, the so you're working with students and this is working with women and, and students in in hebron in this h2 area which is a particular area of hebron where there's uh, all these yeah. uh, israeli settlers now the, the corruption issues you're dealing are those both with the palestinian authority and with the israelis or is it is it, is it one or the other um, uh, uh, with the authority, you can deal in a direct way. You can include them as uh, stakeholders, as decision making in, in a particular area. For instance, they are working also with garbage public health issues, which is now on the corona a very relevant uh, issue. Um, and there you can see that they can work on municipal or regional level with departments of the Palestinian Authority and can make changes. That's, in fact, we didn't expect that so much, but they really could make changes in certain areas like uh, health, uh, public health, garbage access uh, to uh, to uh, to clinics, but uh, ele electricity issues, um, uh, internet issues, and and they can make a difference. But when when you talk about, uh, for instance, uh, Central Street in, in in Hebron, which is close to the Palestinians, and we have several uh, women who are uh, living there along. Uh, that street and they need permits to to go on the street they they sometimes have to go over roofs of the houses to go out of their um of their uh, re residential bases so th th there you cannot really challenge the occupation of course but uh, what you can do is that the um uh, municipality can for instance support uh, people in in that st particular street so that they uh, get some particular help um you know, reg regarding um, uh, issues of um, of health and electricity and uh, garbage. As, uh, th these are issues which are all the more difficult to treat when, when you are living in an area which is closed uh, and or semi close to, to Palestinians. I, I understand. In that understand. area, we, we see that with uh, governmental um, institutions and also kind of public private. Uh, uh, institutions in Hebron uh, that, that we can uh, reach and, and support them really in a very concrete and practical way. When we are working with the, the private school youth in, in Bethlehem, then it is often an issue like the wall, you know, so what can you mm -hmm. do about the wall? So what you can try to do is then to, uh, to raise your voice and, uh, you know, create uh, channels. And that is one of the things we, we want to develop now uh, in the in the summer during an uh, digital summer school. You're so doing online teaching, uh, obviously. Yeah, online teaching, but but you know, you making use of websites uh, in which they can make drawings uh, of the wall in such a way that they make uh, something uh, create something else from the wall, or that they can jump over the wall, or that they can find all creative ways to cross the wall. So that, that these are things which have an, which are interesting for them to do. As such, it can have a liberating effect on, the, on their mental health, uh, especially yeah. now. So, so you're making so, jumping over the wall in a, in a mental, in a... Um, yeah, in they, a it's like a drawing on the wall in, uh, on the screen. So it's like an, uh, a touch app uh, on, on a mobile, which they can use here. I mean, when you are in front of the wall, we can use that app um, as a way for, for visitors, also domestic visitors, Palestinian use, that they can draw in front of the wall, that they can make something different from the wall. Now, of course, that doesn't challenge the wall itself, but it creates like a kind of liberating effect upon the, the use themselves. And especially when that app can also be used by international partners and international youth. So, and then to exchange uh, the drawings uh, you make and, uh, you know, discuss that, that, that is 
kind of voice creating what we also want. Uh, I'd like to, to uh, draw you the, to the current crisis, this, uh, this COVID-19 crisis. What is the situation um, in the Palestinian territories? What is the situation? How many, how many cases are there? Is there a difference between the West Bank? What is the situation? For example, how many people have been uh, struck by this virus or have, uh, have fallen to this virus in, uh, in, in Palestine or on the West Bank right now? Uh, yes, yeah, so in, in the West Bank uh, we have about 480 uh, cases uh, and uh, uh, one uh, death. Um, if you th th then you talk about West Bank and Gaza. Gaza is at present 15 uh, cases, no deaths. Uh, West Bank Gaza together is uh, four and a half million uh, people. Mm -hmm. uh, when you compare that to Israel with uh, about nine million people. You have there 14 uh, and a half thousand uh, uh, virus carriers and uh, 191 deaths uh, at, at the moment. So that, that compares you know, very favorably uh, to, to Israel, the situation in West Bank and especially in Gaza. But uh, uh, you can say that in the beginning of March when the authority uh, acted, they acted quite quickly. So mm -hmm. in a way, the, uh, the, the tourists, uh, especially in a city like Bethlehem, who are present here, they were kind of, you know, chased uh, away uh, to the um, chagrin of the, of the hotel owners and restaurant owners because they felt that was not the way how to treat tourists, to, to get them like in the morning in a bus and get out. Uh, but, but afterwards, you know, people were really uh, thankful to the authority that there was a quick... Uh, a quick uh, reaction uh, under the leadership of uh, um, the Minister of uh, Health and uh, a Palestinian from a Palestinian Christian, in fact, uh, but with an, a, a PhD in, in, in health uh, issues. And so she was quite aware of uh, how to react upon the corona uh, virus uh, spread. She, she, she was quite informed, so and she could convince the other colleagues in the, in the authority and Abu Mazen to act quickly and that that was made really quite a difference um, and still not until now you know people are really thankful for for that um, but right now the, the, the situation on, on the eve of the Ramadan uh, we see that there is um, although the, the the restrictions are still quite uh, strong here uh, formally you know on uh, in the West Bank um, that means the, the guidelines are strict but there is in practice now loosening up of the uh, of the, the guidelines so you can say there's a lockdown um, uh, and and people are officially only allowed to go for you know essential errands and so on to to go out but in, in practice now things are like like it becomes streets you see uh, lots and lots of cars at the moment and mm -hmm. when you look into the taxis uh, so the official guideline is to have only one person in a taxi next to the driver and from the same family, two persons, and that that is absolutely not kept now. So what what we hear, I, I'm not myself observing that, but just people coming in here now today, they tell me that everywhere the taxis are uh, full, and uh, so they also say that they go to you know Ramadan parties after the iftar in the evening, uh, for they prepare themselves uh, for that for uh, tomorrow night. So this this is of course a big issue. We know that when um, the, the people uh, will flock and will have uh, parties, then, then in, in two to three weeks' time, there will be an, a new uh, wave of uh, virus uh, carriers coming up. Yeah. And so that will be the big uh, issue. Yeah. People here uh, think that it, this is an explicit uh, intention of the authorities, so on the one hand, to, because they, they don't have the ability to keep people at home, but by, by bringing up the, the chance that there will be an uh, a wave of virus carrying during Ramadan, that in this way they warn people. And so, I, and, but what, what you need here is that people in public life will follow all kinds of guidelines. Now, that, that is very difficult for people here. Here, usually, you know, in the past, with all the curfews we had here on the Israeli occupation, so that then people are used to be kind of in a complete lockdown. Yeah, but if works. the lockdown is uh, is lifted, then then the people go on the streets, and it's very difficult to have that nuanced type of approach for for public life, and that will be, I think, the challenge for the authority in the coming months. 
So the the uh, because you think it will be difficult for the for the Palestinian Authority to uh, demand for people to stay home. Um, people are used to they say curfews and and often these kind of things, but they they're unlikely to to stay home during Ramadan. And so you're. Uh, is the Palestinian Authority kind of preparing people for the for the chance of increased cases uh, after Ramadan? Is that uh, is that your assessment? No, not at all. That is not at all. That would be uh, what 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 I'm a little bit afraid of is that uh, there will be a quick um, uh, move uh, back uh, home after there will be like in the, in the coming few weeks uh, a rise in the uh, number of cases as is not illogically to to expect, and yeah. so there will be a kind of fear. Uh, what people are not realizing here is that these numbers, you know, I, I give now more or less precise numbers, but of course they are, they are not not in reality. There are lots of people who uh, who are asymptomatic, who are on the on the streets. We don't know among young people. We don't know what are the real uh, numbers. So the infection rate uh, or coefficient, uh, how how that will work out, is difficult to uh, assess. Um, yeah, this there's by the way also the issue of Palestinian workers coming back from Israel for Ramadan. Yeah, of so course. They, uh, where for a few months, uh, one and a half months time, they were in Israel. They were not allowed to to leave. That was the condition, both of Israel and the authority. The authority also didn't want to have them. But now they have the dilemma that many people come back home, uh, you know, to stay with their family, and so they have been for quite some time um, more or less isolated in their you know, agricultural uh, farms, uh, building companies, and so on. Uh, but, but of course, they have been in contact with uh, people. So yeah. they uh, that, then, especially those who are, uh, are are going to Israel without permits, so-called, you know, uh, illegal. They, uh, but they are allowed. They are tolerated. You, you, we have the wall here, but the wall doesn't go in the south or to West Bank, far to, towards the, the Hebron side. So that means yeah. over the hills, I, I mentioned already Batir, the village uh, along the Green Line, there you have lots of uh, Palestinian laborers passing by. And they, uh, even though there are um, uh, Israeli army jeeps, you know, watching that, they, they kind of regulate that stream of so-called uh, illegal workers. They see that, that it's happening, they don't intervene. And um, Many of them, they go through even, you know, open uh, areas uh, in the in the wall. Also, uh, in, the, in the north of the West Bank near Kalpidia, you know, that mm -hmm. there you go. Yeah. So, uh, walls, but sometimes uh, a little bit outside uh, these uh, city areas, they become like fences. Uh, they yeah. become, uh, so that people can even go through the fences. And that is all monitored on the cameras. And, uh, allowed so israel uh, doesn't want to stop that stream of illegal workers um, who are by the way exploited uh, in many ways they have for instance to 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 uh, to to pay their um, palestinian um, how do you call them uh, kind of handlers palestinian workers they have to uh, pay the palestinian middleman they have to pay israeli middleman and all that and, and there's lots of corruption also to keep the authorities at bay um, so they, they, they pay a lot uh, for, for these type of middle persons and, and also they, uh, by the way, also for getting a permit to, to work into Israel, you pay. You pay yeah. also quite, quite a lot to Palestinian middlemen and to the Israeli authorities. So in that okay. sense, uh, whether working illegal or legal, that doesn't make uh, money-wise much of a, much of of a, a difference. difference. Uh, and, yeah. and those without permits, they of course get lesser salary. Yeah. So with 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 COVID nineteen, these Palestinian workers have been working in Israel, where the 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 numbers are much higher than yeah. currently in the in the West Bank. So there's a fear uh, that uh, that will there will be a big uptick when they come to uh, when they come to the West Bank. Now, um, do you uh, what do you think is the Palestinian Authority? Are they prepared? Uh, are the hospitals prepared? Do they have enough capacity to deal with an increase in cases if if that happens? Um, well, we, we, we don't know what, what will be the, the so you have two, two, way, two potential waves because of all kind of partying after if the, in the evenings uh, during Ramadan and, you, you, and, and the loosening of restrictions in general that people feel because of Ramadan you, you don't need to be so, so strict anymore because you already suffer because of, of Ramadan kind of this type of mood we are expecting on the other hand from the Palestinian labor, but how 
how big these waves are, that's the, that really nobody knows. It's a completely unprecedented situation, but now we, we, the, the West Bank uh, has the problem that the, the best hospitals are in East Jerusalem and these are not accessible from the West Bank, Ramallah, Bethlehem, you cannot, you don't have permits at all uh, nowadays to go into East uh, Jerusalem where you have uh, your own uh, virus outbreak, uh, also in, in, the, in the number of hunters. Uh, yeah. but, but going to the hospitals there, that, that is um, a big question mark and uh, that we will have to see uh, in case there will be an outbreak here, uh, second waves, if Israel would allow to, to have Palestinians going to the hospitals in East Jerusalem and in, in case uh, of a, a big uh, wave uh, that they can go to West Jerusalem and to other hospitals. in, in the Israeli Israel. hospitals in that uh, case, yeah. Yeah, and so we have uh, here some hospitals. We have mainly hotels, which open the, their rooms in case of coronavirus uh, patients. That, of course, is uh, a lot of place here available. But the hospitals are are really not very much uh, prepared for for this. And uh, another case is Gaza. Gaza, you know, we, we talk about a very small uh, area which is uh, heavily overpopulated, maybe forty kilometer uh, in length and, and uh, around 8 to 6 kilometer broad. So you have there um, about um, 2 million people, almost 2 million people in a very small surface. And there, there's in total no um, uh, health um, uh, infrastructure to, 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 to absorb any real type of numbers. So th there it looks, the only possibility is that they uh, try to, to keep that number as it is now 15 and to, to be uh, all, everything to, to invest into not, um, yep. not to, to have larger numbers but, but how that, that can be when we talk about the situation of uh, you know we all know that the, the virus can stay for who knows one year two years before a vaccine is uh, yeah. Um, taken. So how you can isolate such a is, is a huge uh, challenge. Yeah. Now um, already it sounds like the 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 West Bank uh, has uh, um, has been closed off uh, not just because of the situation, of course, on the ground from each other, but many people are not being are not able to go to work. There already is a lockdown. So what does this mean currently economically for for for? Uh, for the West Bank and Gaza, how how is it affecting the economy um, of, of of the Palestinians? Yeah, like like you know, everywhere in the world, uh, but but here um, we we had already before the coronavirus outbreak, depending on how, how you calculate exactly, but an environment figures for, which vary from twenty to forty. In Gaza, it is uh, it is over fifty percent what what we hear. Uh, here in the West Bank, the official World Bank figures are a twenty percent, but in practice, that uh, that is a larger figure, uh, and especially among young people who are the majority here in the population uh, below 30, 30 years. So, the, so the, the the we don't have much uh, big uh, companies uh, here. It is mainly shops and so small companies, and, and these these uh, many of these are not able to survive. Of course, there's no uh, governmental support because the government itself is dependent upon international funding, which now is very limited uh, while at the same time because of the emergency situation and for developing clinics and hospital capacity, you would need more. So that, that is one of the main uh, strains uh, at, the, at, at the moment. Um, how, how do people deal with it? Where do they get their money, their livelihoods, their food, their, their help from? Uh, yeah, they, the, the families, government are, support. families are supporting each other, and so the, 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 we hear uh, cases that that for for people it's difficult to get money from from the banks. So um, you, you, that is here. You can say the good thing that the extended family and uh, neighborhood uh, committees and neighborhood support is is flourishing here. Mm -hmm. uh, even though, of course, there's the difficulties that you have uh, to, to keep distance from each other, but still, you, you can say that, that here, um, traditionally, people don't, are, are not allowed to, to really get, get hungry in the, in the West Bank. Gaza is another matter, but, but 
here you, you can say that um, it is in, inconceivable that, that elderly people, very vulnerable, vulnerable people, disabled, that, that they would um, be without protection in the families. But that, that is as long as we go. If we now talk about one month, uh, one and a half months, then it, it is, uh, I think, becoming critical when, when we talk about several months. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, yeah. Lots of uh, companies will uh, go down. Yeah. Yeah. So it's uh, even more severe than it already is there. Um, how about the churches and the uh, and, and the mosques? Are they also a, a major source of of care for for people there locally? You said the communities. Or is there also help coming from from mosques and from churches? Yeah, there is help coming from uh, from churches, uh, which I'm a little bit more familiar. Uh, that that is um, uh, on a, on, a, on a scale that uh, uh, you know food uh, distribution has been in the first couple of, of weeks. Um, there is some money distribution among uh, poor families uh, or families who cannot get um, have to pay loans. Uh, that is one issue here in Bethlehem very much, which uh, is a burden on families. Um, uh, the, 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 but but what, what is needed when you talk about a little bit longer that then, then organizations like Tonto Commission, church organizations, they would need to create like alternative jobs and, and, and that, that is a new track which um, will be a challenge for the churches. For the mosques, uh, we expect for, for in the period of Ramadan that there will be more uh, support among each other because that's par part of the obligations under Ramadan. Um, we um, we will uh, get, um, I think, a lot of solidarity during uh, Ramadan. But the the issue is that while maybe the immediate uh, impact of of the of the virus can be absorbed, it is the the structural issue, and and that is really not even the middle term, but uh, between the short and the middle term, what will happen after you know, three, four, five, five months when, uh, okay, the schools will be open, um, uh, food, will, will there be enough uh, food that is um, uh, here? And I, I think what you can say is that the cities here in, in the West Bank, they are surrounded by uh, the uh, uh, agricultural areas uh, and the villages around and they are bringing up until now, they are bringing uh, the food, so that that is most likely that um, uh, the food will come from the uh, areas around the cities. While normally the majority of, if you go to the to the, the vegetable um, shops, then the majority of the food comes from Israel. I think that yeah. that might stop now, and that that is in itself not a bad development. That um, uh, there will be more local based. Uh, supply and distribution networks then then and 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 because also the prices will be uh, more payable than what what um, will be the food in in the in the more expensive uh, uh, supermarkets uh, here which are i think difficult to pay so yeah and the emphasis will be upon uh, fresh food if that would remain the, to, to, to be uh, supplied from the countryside, and that, that is maybe one, one mechanism. So it will be, I remember this was one of the discussions in the Intifadas, uh, even though you talk about the 80s and uh, the, uh, the period of the, um, from 2000 to 2004, yeah. you had more of this type of, um, you know, local economies, locally based economies, self-sufficient uh, economies, and I think that because of lack of money and because of the problems of distribution of transport, that that may be an uh, upcoming scenario for development, yeah. For, for the situation here, yeah. when at least when the whole, the whole crisis will extend to you know one to two years, if we talk about that. Yeah, of course. So the, uh, the this is what you foresee as as a response uh, uh, to this crisis. Are there other things? Um, uh, needed um, that would that would um, create more economic development. Are there other uh, issues um, uh, that uh, things that, that that could help um, uh, assuage uh, the, the situation, make it make it less uh, severe? 
I mean, we're talking, of course, about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict as well. So what other measures um, uh, 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 would be needed to, uh, to make the impact less severe and to, to help not further deteriorate the, the Palestinian economy? Now, one um, issue in, in the field of education is to, uh, to have students, groups, as they are already doing now, to support uh, the community. And so there's also this whole mental health uh, issue that when uh, people are being locked up in, in, also in culture where, where people are used to touch and, uh, each, each other very well and, and to be warm towards each other in, in the context of the families, when people, uh, you know, inside the families are, are not allowed to visit each other, that, that is like really a mental health issue. Mm -hmm. So I think it would be important for, for Palestinian education that young people are, are coming up to, uh, to take initiatives uh, on the basis of solidarity and uh, you know citizenship uh, values, and um, uh, also that um, uh, you know the young people with whom we are working. We work, for instance, in Hebron now on the setting up of an uh, early warning system by, by young women. Uh, initially, the intention there was to to do that, um, you know, in relation to issues like, like what we discussed before, corruption. Uh, occupation issues, um, uh, Israeli-Palestinian issues, but now because of the, the crisis on uh, Corona, so then the issues is, so which vulnerable groups um, are, are somehow being left out because of the political situation in, in, a, in a city like Hebron? So how, how can uh, neighbors, how can people in the neighborhood warn each other in time, also using digital means, so that everybody knows that these are the, the, the people who, who need help. That, that is uh, what we are now working upon together with another Palestinian organization to uh, um, work on what are the issues which are most urgent and what are, are the, the issues on which people and young people can work in, in terms of solidarity and what is then the, uh, the added value of, of uh, you know, sites which are, uh, can be easily accessed through mobile uh, phones. And so that there will be a net network of mobile phones to, to see what, what, what can be done in, uh, in, in, in the field of protecting, uh, you know, the human dignity of, of people. And, and here, uh, Palestinian education, when they are starting to go up, can, can be really uh, relevant. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that under young people, uh, that the, the transmission of the virus will uh, go le uh, less less quick and, and the symptoms are less severe than among adults and so we all we, we see that younger people uh, most likely will have more chances to mix with each other in in, in the coming time and so the, they they could form new uh, you know cadres of leadership in such a crisis so that they learn uh, in 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 the, through community education in a way it is for I, i'm sure that for students it will be very difficult to keep focus upon you know the the normal issues when so much happens around so i, I suspect that the issues of community learning also in class and what what you can do to be relevant as young people for the community in these times where young people can also make a difference that that i think would be very good for the crisis very good also for palestinian society that young people get more of a voice than it is now and um, we, we uh, my organization is now working with the Palestinian Authority, Ministry of Education, to see how more government schools can be accessed uh, to, to this, and um, uh, to see what what it could be, uh, you know, kind of campaigns, community campaigns for Palestinian youth in these uh, periods. And in general, we feel under uh, Palestinian educators now, for instance. We, we, had, we had to check with uh, Palestinian teachers in the situation of lockdown whether they were be willing to do uh, outside school to do work. But, uh, but all of them were interested to volunteer and to do extra work. Both the teachers, teachers and the students? Or... Yeah, the teachers, even while the students are at home and they have to work with groups of uh, 50 students, each of uh, these, uh, these teachers or groups of teachers. So it, it, it takes them quite some time, but all of them were interested to develop um, like uh, and to collect stories uh, through students about initiatives in the communities and to use that as uh, educational materials at schools. Okay. So the, uh, the, this type of uh, work, community work, is all the more important um, now and uh, we, we tend to focus very much on the material issue 
but equally important is the mental health and and and, uh, and at least to make to capitalize upon the strengths of the Palestinian society. We call that sumut, uh, steadfastness. Uh, that that means, you know, staying strong uh, among each other uh, as well as the link to the land to keep that uh, uh, steady. So to to uh, I think what we have to look now is that uh, the. That given also that that people feel the society is very much under pressure, so to use all the resources, traditional and modern resources of the society, to keep that uh, together, because that is so important not just for surviving this uh, pandemic, but also in, in order to to have the political challenges which are still very much there, and uh, that is also uh, part of it is the ongoing occupation, and part of it is the new American plan, which paves the way for annexation uh, of, of large parts of the West Bank. Yeah. That, that is the next uh, question I wanted to ask you. Um, uh, you've told me, I've, I have understood that in the run-up now to November, um, uh, there is a, a pressure, let's say, from Israel or from the Israeli right parties to to formally annex parts of, uh, of, of the West Bank. Can you t uh, tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so the, the, uh, the, the new Israeli government, it's just a few days ago that the new Israeli government has been uh, formed between the uh, Likud of Netanyahu, the present uh, prime minister, and the, um, another party uh, led by a former Israeli general, uh, Gans. So they, they, they have a comfortable majority in, in parliament. And uh, it took, it took uh, quite a while before that government has been formed. Um, there have been three uh, elections uh, gone because it was uh, impossible and because of the uh, you know, peculiar situation of Netanyahu in Israel, where he has also several court uh, files and bribery issues to, uh, to do, to, to handle. Anyway, that, that is another matter, but the, um, the, 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 the situation after, in February, uh, the, the, you, the American uh, government presented its, uh, its deal uh, for a final settlement uh, between Israel and Palestine. And so that, that is completely one-sided towards uh, Israel, which uh, is, is paving the way now for the annexation of large parts of the West Bank, especially uh, the Jordan Valley, which is about 30% of the, of the West Bank. Mm -hmm. Um, lots of Israeli settlements. It's also kind of uh, the Green Valley uh, for for also Palestinian agriculture, very important. It's if that would happen, then the West Bank becomes uh, already it, it becomes like an, um, you know a series of uh, cities with uh, autonomy surrounded by uh, settlements and by lands uh, largely uh, under control under direct Israeli military control or annexed to Israel um, so, th so that, that that was in February uh, uh, explained by the American government yeah. it was picked up by all the main Israeli political parties and in fact endorsed by Israeli established uh, parties and and now it is a part of the governmental uh, new government platform so the, the annexation of the Jordan Valley, it's only when that would be done and, and they, they would need, in any case, the American endorsement of uh, such official annexation on the basis of that, 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 that plan uh, called here the deal of the century or the, the slap of the century. So how, how, what we feel on the ground of this plan is that uh, settlers feel emboldened to um, uh, you know, go into deep into areas. In fact, in, in January, February, we already felt that uh, here in the surrounding of Bethlehem, you saw more, more uh, settler use going into areas which uh, are um, part of area B, you know, which yeah. is under Palestinian well, for the, for the viewers, uh, If I may interrupt you, uh, Tuan, for a moment. Uh, for the viewers, it's important to know that the West Bank since Oslo, since 93, has been steadily uh, divided into three territories, A, B, and C territories. And the A territories are basically the cities, 
the beast territories are the surroundings and the sea territories are the uh, uh, Israeli controlled parts of the, of the of the West Bank so that's quite important to uh, uh, to know as an introduction so you're saying that the the B territories where the Palestinian Authority at least has should have civil control um, is now also being um, uh, again entered by settler youth this is what you mean with B yeah. territory yeah. right that's right yes an area C that that is 60 uh, percent of the West Bank and so so there the, the, the that part is also um, where where the Jordan Valley is um, yeah, yeah. Uh, belongs to. In, 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 they are all technical divisions, by the way. They are kind of security based, and they are not uh, related to the feeding of Palestinians that who, who see like Palestine as a whole and the West Bank in a way as a whole. But uh, the, the, they are forced to 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 deal with issues like A, B, and C, and in Hebron, you know, H one, H two, similar type of uh, division. Um, it, but it, it shows the kind of fragmentation which is imposed upon them and which is also part of this, uh, this deal of the century that uh, the, um, uh, the results will be that the, the cities under uh, Area A under Palestinian Authority control that they will be surrounded by um, areas which are, whether you call them B or C, which are largely Israeli uh, uh, controlled and and also uh, I think infiltrated in, in the sense that area B under authority that it will become more uh, part of uh, kind of area C, mm -hmm. so that 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 all creates like a kind of suffocating uh, situation for the Palestinian cities and the surrounding uh, surrounding villages there, uh, that yeah. will lead to a, a greater mobility of the of the villages towards the city, so the cities become like open air prisons. Uh, and, and and that 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 makes it in, in combination with the um, coronavirus virus uh, really like a very critical situation here here in the West Bank. So we shouldn't focus too much upon the figures right now, but more on the dangers in the in the in the middle term uh, after a few months, and uh, the long term whether we can speak uh, under such circumstances of, of a viable society, let alone of. Uh, future Palestinian state. So th this is, uh, I think, the, the big uh, also kind of change in the uh, political awareness among people here that uh, in the past we, people thought that uh, a Palestinian state would be, is difficult to reach, but somehow that's the only feasible political horizon. There's two-state solution, that means West Bank, Gaza, East Jerusalem may be part of that as uh, belonging to a Palestinian state next to Israel. But we see under the influence of the deal of the century and under built up to that uh, deal last year that slowly uh, here th there is a kind of uh, desperation about uh, whether such a um, two-state solution is viable at all. So now you can say the majority in uh, popular opinion polls is uh, not seeing that a two-state solution is any more viable. And, and well, the present uh, PNA is built upon that solution. They uh, are supposed to be, you know, for a temporary period, to be the guarding the uh, authority in order that it becomes uh, the uh, uh, the core of a Palestinian state. But if there is no Palestinian state coming, then politically um, they, uh, they they don't have a base to stand upon the Palestinian authority. Because next to that, there is a big economic uh, crisis for the authority. If the international community would not be uh, interested, which is quite possible to fund it. So then the uh, authority itself, the future of the authority itself will be both politically and economically will be very weak. Yeah, because the, the uh, are you then saying that they, uh, um, because the precondition for helping the Palestinian Authority would that there would be a two-state solution. But if there's no two-state solution, the question then becomes why would the external donors still help that area while there no longer is a, a commitment towards a two-state solution specifically coming from uh, uh, the Israeli side, um, of course, in this sense, because there's little territory then, then left. Yeah, that, that is, um, yeah, that is, that is the risk. the risk when the authority would say, uh, look, um, we, we uh, ourselves leave the two-state solution. You know, when the authority would say that, and you can say the uh, fig leaf, uh, which to some extent the two-state solution has been in the previous uh, years for the international community, it would say, look, it's not possible anymore. But then uh, what will be the basis for the international community to, uh, to financially support the authority? 
then they would have to find another way than Oslo for, for this. Yeah. So th this is, um, it, it would be a, a politically a bit uh, chaotic uh, for the authority, but for, what is the other option for the international authority not to have any kind of uh, Palestinian uh, authority even to manage the situation or manage the occupation, as you could say, uh, but but would then then you know the authority would uh, simply collapse uh, or withdraw. Uh, both ways are possible, and then you 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 would have like a direct occupation over the whole uh, area. So that that you is uh, you take over control again. Yeah, uh, and that means Israel also is is then responsible for the financing of the. Uh, of, of the occupation as it is now done by the international uh, community. Okay, this is maybe not a, a very positive note to uh, to end on, um, but I'd like to to, to uh, this particular uh, analysis or uh, uh, scenario. Um, but are there other things you think we should uh, be discussing, or that here at the end of the interview that you would like to uh, point uh, to, towards that you think we haven't discussed yet that you would like to address? Well, just to to emphasize that. Um, you know, we, we usually, when we talk about the Palestinian issue, we think it is going from bad to worse. And to some extent, that is also like the mentality here. Tomorrow will be worse than today. But still, what we shouldn't underestimate is that the, there's a very strong feeling of, uh, of, of, of life, of um, the ability to, to fear back. You know, we, in international jargon, it's called resilience. Mm -hmm. Now that 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 is absolutely strong. The, the there is here a base of society in which uh, people are still uh, have the ability to fight, and um, I, I, this is one of the things you know that the 25 years that I'm living here that I noticed that uh, clearly that that uh, spirit uh, of Samut didn't leave yet. So that's the reason also to be uh, positive in the long run. Um, whatever kind of solution, whatever kind of um, way of you know living together with Israelis and uh, with the world, there 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 is this fighting spirit um, uh, not to give up on uh, issues of inequality of apartheid, and so the, in in that sense, um, there is always to, to go back on Sumut as a, a basic for optimism, while you know the mind uh, might say pass, you should be pessimistic. Uh, thanks, Lord Swan. Uh, where could uh, people find you, the, uh, your, your work or your institution, uh, uh, the institute? Where can they find it? Yeah, if they, if they put on Google uh, Arab Educational Institute Bethlehem, then they find uh, the website of the, of the AI. And there they can find uh, more information and also ways to contact me if they would like to, to know more about uh, the type of work we are doing. Okay. Thank you very much, Etwan, uh, for this interview, and um, yeah, good luck with all the work you're doing. Uh, you're doing there. Thanks. Thank you.